<laughs> I liked how you put that on her for a second there. It's like, come on, kid, get your life together. Get it together. Hey, y'all, it's LJ here, owner and founder of Smart Moms Plan Disney and Smart Moms Travel. We are so glad you're here for another episode of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast. Now, here's your host, Allie. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast. I am so excited as we dive into our second resort deep dive here on the show. A couple weeks back, if you haven't heard, we did Pop Century. It was so much fun. Love just kind of breaking down these incredible places that you can stay that really just make your vacation so much better when you are in that Disney bubble. I am here with Stacy and LJ. Hello. Good morning, ladies. Hey there. Good morning. And we actually put this vote to our Patreon subscribers. They helped us decide today which resort we were going to break down, dive into, and bring to all of you. So I just want to remind you, if you are not yet a member of the Patreon community here for the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast, take a second, jump in there. We have two tiers. It's already been so much fun. We love offering that extra level of support to really help you make your vacation more magical for your kiddos and less stressful for yourself. And we did something so fun by by offering this poll and allowing our listeners, the people that are absorbing all of this, to decide what are we going to talk about next. And you all picked Art of Animation. I love Art of Animation. It's the most Disney resort on property. I said what I said. Yeah, nope. I completely agree. <laughs> I was excited. You know, it was interesting because like I said, we've already t- talked about Pop Century and this is just right across the bridge. And so it's a good little companion, but I agree with you, LJ. It is the most Disney of Disney that Disney offers. Yep. <laughs> so I can't wait to talk about why that is right? Because there are a lot of reasons that make this resort what you and I both just agreed on. Uh, Before we do, I also want to tell listeners, make sure you stick around because today, for the first time ever here on the show, we are going to be talking with a special guest, another agent that is not a regular host here that you're used to on the podcast. That's going to give us a really fun perspective on something that she knows really well when it comes to planning Disney. And honestly, uh, it's going to be something most of our listeners really want to hear and uh, could learn a lot about. So make sure you stick around to hear that. And not only how it relates to this resort, but also just how it can really help your whole Disney trip in total. Uh, So Art of Animation being the most Disney of the Disney. Now, we said that, but Disney also has all-star movies, Why do the two of you think that even more than all-star movies, which is another value resort that has larger than life fun in movies and characters, why is this one even more Disney? It's one of the newer ones. It's got a little bit more updated look and feel to it. But I really like that within the courtyard area, you don't see the, the railing and the sidewalks that go around the outside of the building which gives it a big mural look to it, which just makes the scenery so much bigger. They use every inch of that courtyard to theme and it is absolutely gorgeous and so you have these tall buildings from the from the roof to the ground it is just covered and I think that just adds so much to it whereas at the all-star it's super cute but it's got the the walkways and the railings going outside and the, around the building it just kind of um it has a different look and feel to it so this just I think Art of Animation feels a little leveled up when it comes to the value resort. And the design of it is just from left to right, top to bottom, covered in Disney. It's amazing. You know, I hadn't even thought of that like motel versus hotel feeling. Like it doesn't, it just didn't really register to me. Like, you know, Pop Century and then the All-Stars are all set up more in the motel situation where like your door is to the outside. And then... Art of Animation is set up more like a hotel where you like go into the building and then your door is inside the building. And that's what you're referring to with like, there's not those outdoor walk spaces. That to me, I didn't even think about it. To me, it's more the characters that they've chosen. And the characters at all start movies, like the themes feel less Disney to me. Like it's um, Herbie, which, okay, it's cute and my son loves him, but like it doesn't scream Disney to me. And then Mighty Ducks, same. Like, I'm a huge Mighty Ducks fan. Love it. Like, grew up on it. Can tell you, like, recite the movies to you. But it doesn't, like, have, like, a Disney feel to me. And then 101 Dalmatians is very Disney to me. And Toy Story is extremely Disney to me. So those two, like, balance it out. 
But over at Art of Animation, you have Cars, Nemo, Lion King, and Little Mermaid, which are like the heart of the movies that we grew up on. Yes. Yeah. So it just makes so much more sense. That's like, it's like, who is there? Yes, Pongo is over there at All Star Movies and Woody is over there. But I just feel like at um, Art of Animation, it's just so Disney. It's like, these are, this is, these are our people. These are our characters. That's one of the exact reasons. Taze, I love your perspective analysis. Like that's, I agree with LJ. I wasn't even, my mind wasn't even there yet. And I was in line with your thinking, LJ, just about who's there. These themes are recognizable. Kids love them. Yeah. Like Toy Story, I almost wish was over at Art of Animation. Yeah. Like I'm like, <laughs> same. Yeah. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Toy Story belongs at Art of Animation. It does. And then they can and- put something like older over there at movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I agree. And, you know, one of the other things that I really love about this resort and the reason, you know, sometimes when I'm talking to families about Disney World, this is in their mind when they're thinking about the resort they're going to stay in. This is in my when I'm thinking they have in mind, right? Like you're going to Disney and you want to feel that immersion. A lot of people with kids, especially young kids. And that's what this resort does. When you're at any other Disney resort, for the most part, there are a couple others that do what I'm about to say, but this is the resort that does it best, where they take the theming from the outside and they bring it in, right? Like the rooms at the other value resorts, which are the all-star resorts and pop century, they're much more understated. They're just kind of clean, understated Disney, and the outside of the resort is where you get that liveliness. Art of Animation brings the themed area that you are staying in right on into the room. You are fully immersed from lobby to resort hotel room and everything in between. It's even from the beginning in the lobby when you have the artist sketches before they even come to life. And and you kind of watch those as you're walking and they get filled in and they become more animation-like. It's a journey and a story, which is very Disney. And then when you're out into the courtyards and in towards the buildings where you're going to be staying, that's when you have the animation that has come to life that you watched from the brainstorming stage, you know, the, the realizing stage right there in the lobby. And so for me, seeing Disney tell a story through a resort, there's nothing more Disney than that. I think that is really a nostalgic feel from those of us who grew up watching literally Walt Disney himself. He would do like little behind the scenes of Disney World as part of his programming. And it just feels like that. It feels like you're seeing a little bit of that behind the scenes. This is how the artist created Ariel. This is how the artist created Nemo. And I don't know, that just is a fun aspect of it to me where it takes the this animation and really makes it the artwork and that we can all enjoy. And I just love that it is that storytelling. You don't necessarily recognize that that's what you're doing until you've made through and then you're like, oh, wow, I just watched how they developed this whole character. And I don't know, it's just so Disney. I really like their commitment to the characters, too, because I feel like at Art of Animation, like you said, Ali, those four uh, movies that they like stick to, and that's what you see throughout. And then you said when you go into the rooms, inside the room, there's so much Little Mermaid in there and it continues with the story. And at the All-Stars, all the rooms are the same. You're in, you know, if you're in the 101 Dalmatians or if you're in the Toy Story, inside the room, you cannot tell the difference. And that is not the case at Art of Animation. Like, it is still continued to be themed for whatever area you're in and really well done, too. Like, it's part of the experience for my kids, for sure. Yeah, you're going to get, like, coral chairs, right, in Nemo. Mm-hmm. And you're going to get workbench dressers in the cars area. It's not just, here's a picture of Mater. You know, this Mm -hmm. is your furniture, your bathroom, your shower curtain, your door. Everything is going to be thought through. And to me, that is Disney at its finest. That's Imagineers working at a resort. And that's kind of what you expect. And it is the the more expensive of the value resorts that we've already mentioned. Uh, It does even the standard room. So let's back up. One of the really unique things about Art of Animation is it offers not only the standard rooms, which are in the Little Mermaid section, you have the King Triton building and Ursula and Ariel herself in three buildings. And those are the standard rooms. They sleep for, they're pretty small and, and very basic in terms of amenities, but theming is exciting. And they also have the family suites. And those are going to be larger. They're going to have essentially three different sleeping spaces uh, across two different rooms. 
and they offer more space, but they're a little bit higher priced, right? So those are at this value resort, but they're priced more moderate to honestly low deluxe, depending on where you're looking, but you're getting so much space for a lot of value. And you can sleep six. That's really what it's about. Yes, you get, and we'll, we'll dive in a little bit and talk about the amenities you get in these suites. But it's important to know that when Disney runs promos, sometimes the Little Mermaid rooms are hard to catch on a promo because they're so popular. But I have found that the family suites are almost always qualifying and almost always available under a promo. And so you can often save many times of year $150 a night, Mm -hmm. you know, so don't be scared of sticker shock when it comes to these family suites, because I have seen families save a lot of money applying promotions that are often offered and available for those suites. So Not only are they a great value for their space, but there's always potential for them to go down and things like that. So I really love that this resort can accommodate larger families because, you know, at the other values, if you have three kids, you're kind of out of luck. Mm -hmm. One other thing I want to mention before we kind of dive into the specifics of this resort, two important things. Number one, this resort is dog friendly. So you can have a dog. It has to be well behaved, has to be up on all of its medical. And you can talk to your smart mom's travel agent about the specifics when it comes to bringing your dog to Disney World. But it's important to note that this resort is one of the few that does allow dogs on property. And if that's something that's actually a deterrent to you, I think it's important to also point out that does not mean this resort is running rampant with dogs. I've actually never... <laughs> I've never seen a dog there. I have not either. That's what I was going to say. I've actually <laughs> never seen a dog. So dogs are allowed, but it's not like there's, you know, dogs are going to the bathroom on the courtyards and you're seeing them everywhere. That's not happening. And uh, if you have any sort of pet allergy, you know, I wouldn't worry about rooms having dog hair and things like that. They actually do these really intense cleanings to make sure that's not going to hinder anybody's experience. So dog friendly, yes, but don't let that be something that stops you from enjoying this resort if you have, you know, an issue with with animals. So I think that's great about this resort. Room sizes, immersion, theming, just all really well thought out. And I, I think that's really great. Let's talk about transportation when it comes to Art of Animation. Much like Pop Century, which we've covered on the show, Art of Animation is on the Skyliner, which is my favorite form of transportation at Disney, the gondola system that's up on the wires in the sky. And it has its own little area that it shares with Pop Century. So you're kind of, you've got one Skyliner station for those two large resorts. And you're going to make your way to either Hollywood Studios or Epcot with the Skyliner. So that is really convenient, quick, functional for families, especially with little ones. When you're going to two out of four of the parks, you know, if you can knock buses off of your radar for two out of four parks... That's a huge win for me. Totally agree. Exactly. I think that the theming at Art of Animation is top notch and really fun and a big part of why people choose to go there. But I honestly would probably not choose the added price of Art of Animation if it was not on the Skyliner. But because you have theming and Skyliner totally worth it. No doubt about it. It feels like a no brainer to me. It honestly like I would if you're sitting there like should I go to the All Stars or should I spend the extra like whatever it is 30 40 you know, maybe even not that high sometimes. It's like oh my gosh. It's so so worth it. It's the, having the Skyliner and you know for two of your days if you're going to go to Epcot one day and Hollywood Studios another day, especially if you have a stroller, like you guys know my angst about strollers on buses. I'll pay anything to not have to lift that thing and carry it on the bus. So it's for sure worth it in my mind. Yeah. The other thing about the Skyliner, it yeah, it goes to Hollywood Studios and Epcot, but it also opens up this world of other opportunity. You can take it to the other resorts that are connected on the line or to the boardwalk area at Disney World, which if you're not familiar with the boardwalk area of Walt Disney World, it's a shopping, eating, and entertainment district. Not huge like you would think Disney Springs, but it is a wonderful place to spend a night and, and have that free entertainment and have delicious food, whether it be quick service or a sit-down reservation that your smart mom's agent can get you a, a reservation for. Uh, You're going to have great bars, entertainment. There's the dance hall for adults or magicians for little ones. I mean, the, the spread of opportunity that the Skyliner opens up is a huge addition to your to your, the value of your vacation. When you're staying at Art of Animation, you're no longer thinking of a funnel of resort and parks, resort and parks. This is my vacation, my resort, and my parks. You have my resort, my parks 
my entertainment, my down days, my food, my transportation. You have all of these other factors that are leveling your vacation up with every single one of them. Are we just not going to mention Riviera? Like, are, are we going to go right by that? We talk about Boardwalk, but Riviera is like the place I go. I wind up there. I don't even mean to. And I just am like, am I at Riviera again? It's just, I love Primo Piatto, which is their quick service. In my opinion, the best quick service on Disney World property. I take every chance I can to eat there, which is one of the reasons why I end up there all the time. But also they just have this like really fabulous area. The building is shaped in a kind of a giant U. And in the middle of the U is this amazing courtyard. There's the pools. And of course, if you're not staying there, you can't use the pools. So those aren't really on my radar when I'm just hanging out. But there's like all these like lawn games, just fun places inside that you to sit and my kids love it. And I just feel like I'm, I can see the Skyliner, which makes me happy. And the lake is there. And I just feel like I'm in France and I'm on the French Riviera and I love it. And I, I go there all the time and you should too. Staying at a resort like Art of Animation and getting the Skyliner allows you to have those experiences. So yeah, when you're at another resort that only has bus transportation, it can be really tricky sometimes. And we've talked about this in our transportation episode. Those buses, they go from your resort to the parks and to Disney Springs and to the water parks. And that's it. You, you can't get on a bus and go to another resort for dinner. So if you want to go out somewhere to eat, that's somewhere not at your resort, you have to figure that out. Are you going to Uber? Are you going to do some sort of crazy <laughs> multi-hop transportation route? But when you're on the Skyliner, it just opens up, just like Allie was saying, so many more opportunities to explore, to eat at other places. And I just think the Skyliner is so valuable. Yeah. And it's important to note that they do typically close the Skyliner once a year for maintenance. So just make sure that if you are heading to Art of Animation, check and you know if the Skyline is scheduled to be closed. It's typically only a week and Disney does offer a workaround, but I would hate for any listeners to arrive at the resort and be excited about this transportation we're talking about and it not be available to them. So be sure that you're keeping an eye on any sort of closure that may be happening for maintenance for that. And that's usually in January. So it's coming up. So yeah, for 2024 coming up as we release this episode, it is slated for the 16th through the 27th. And I always like to consider that that could last a little longer. It could be a little shorter. You know, you never know what is going to happen when you go in for any sort of maintenance. So, okay. So I did this, you guys. I like, I did this, Allie, you're not going to like, you're going to be disappointed in me. Total rookie mistake. I booked the Riviera. I was so glad to get it because it was kind of last minute and I couldn't believe they had availability. So I grabbed it, booked it for a rewards trip. And then I like looking and I'm like, oh my gosh, the Skyliner is down. And this, by the time I figured it out, there was nothing I could do. Like it was already like in motion and agents were coming and I was like, okay guys, whoops, my bad. And it was towards the tail end of like when they were supposed to be like, cause they'll tell you like from this date to this date. And so I was like hoping, like I was praying. I was like, everybody in the agency, <laughs> let's pray they get done faster than they mean to. And sure enough, they did. They We didn't have a single day where the Skyliner was down and we couldn't use it. I think it might have been down the day we arrived, but we weren't planning on using it anyway. And then the next morning, like it opened like normal. And I was like, hallelujah. And another thing to keep in mind with the Skyliner is it is dependent on the weather. So if there's any lightning in the area, if it's windy, they may have it shut down for that as well. So it's not just, you know, 100% guarantee you're going to have that if you're staying at Art of Animation or Pop Century um, or any of the other resorts on that line. But it's it's open the most of the time. I feel like that happens less than you would expect. Like you feel like there's going to be, it's Florida, it's going to be raining, but they don't shut it down for rain. They shut it down only for lightning. And I, I've honestly like, you know, living here and and using it all the time, I feel like it's like, one, two times that I've ever run into it, like being closed. So I feel like it's pretty, pretty good, pretty reliable. Yeah, I think they've done a good job as well. I agree with exactly how you stated that is you could, you would expect it to be down more than it actually is. Uh, and say to your point, when you said it's not a hundred percent guarantee, I just think with Disney in general, that's a great attitude, right? Most of the time you're going to get the Skyliner and starting early in 2024, early January, park pass reservations are going away. So 
you know, maybe you were really excited to use the Skyliner on your Hollywood Studios day and the weather's bad and it's shut down. You're going to start to regain some flexibility where maybe you could just say, well, hey, let's just hop on the bus and go to Magic Kingdom today instead. And let's try Hollywood Studios tomorrow. So you're gaining even more flexibility um, and opportunity as as time goes by here and as we move into 2024. In addition to the Skyliner, you are going to need to be able to get to Disney Springs, Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom. And for those destinations, you're going to use the Disney bus system. Art of Animation does have dedicated buses. They're only fun- um, operating for Art of Animation, which is great because this is such a massive resort. And uh, the bus rides aren't too bad, you know, 10 to 20 minutes, depending on where you're going and, and what day it is and how crowded. But we always make it a game with the buses at the bus stop. And, you know, what bus is that? Is that where we're going? And excuse me, I forgot to mention also the water parks could also be a place you're taking the buses. But it's got great transportation opportunity at Art of Animation. And I think that alone is a reason to consider how much easier your trip's going to be. I agree with you on this. I feel like in the DVC community, which is the Disney Vacation Club, these are like the owners that own at the deluxe resorts like I own at um, Saratoga Springs. So in this community, there is like the conversation of like how good the buses are at Pop Century and at Art of Animation. And we're like, come on, like we need some of that good busing over here. And I think some of the deluxes don't get as much love because on the bus front, because People are much more likely to take Ubers. They're much more likely to have another form of transportation that they will take. Where there is in Art of Animation and Pop Century, they know you, you're going to need it to go to Magic Kingdom. You're going to need it to go to Animal Kingdom. So the buses are like clockwork over there. So I think it's funny that, you know, the more deluxe clientele is like jealous of the busing at these values. Yeah, it, it they are round the clock. They're much quicker. You're not usually waiting. You're going to sense that, I think, when you're there. You're not going to be... We had a great time at Art of Animation, but the transportation was tough. Like, no. Nobody says that. Mm-mm. This is a great This is a great start to this conversation. I love talking so in-depth about these places because it really just makes me feel like I'm there. You know, right now, I I'm, I'm truly feel like I'm sitting at Art of Animation while we record this. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk about these incredible resort room opportunities. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I know you're ready to get back to the podcast, but I've got something very simple for you to do. Join my Facebook group, Disney Planning Made Simple. I'm Stacy, one of your podcast hosts, and I have a sweet, friendly Facebook group made for those of us who thrive in the simple pleasures of life. Things like family, food, and Disney. Join at facebook.com slash groups slash Disney Made Simple or follow with the link in the show notes. We'll be so happy to see you there. All right. Welcome back. We are talking about Art of Animation today, the Disney resort of all Disney resorts, immersive and theming, fun, lively, storytelling resort that is Art of Animation. I want to start our discussion now about these resort rooms, starting, of course, with the Little Mermaid section. And the reason I say, of course, is because this is the section that is only the standard rooms at Art of Animation. These rooms sleep four guests. So you're looking at a group of only four per room and uh, they're a little further out on property. So these are not considered preferred in location at Art of Animation. They're far. They're like, get your hiking boots on. Yeah, I agree. And this is kind of where the discussion comes in, where if you're a family of four and you're choosing Little Mermaid, you are intentionally choosing and saying, I'm okay with that walk. I'm okay giving up a preferred location at maybe an alternative value resort like Pop Century uh, to have the art of animation experience. And that is what I feel like is not a no brainer. Like I feel I feel like there's not like a crystal clear, like everybody's so, it's so clear that you have to do this. Doing preferred at pop and being right there in the middle and having no walk compared to doing a little mermaid at art of animation. Like it's not just money. It's, and the cost is like at that point much closer because paying for preferred at pop is just not going to be that different than standard at art of animation. So the cost is like not a big factor. It really just comes down to like, the walking versus the theming head to head. Exactly. 100% 
exactly that's what it is. What does your family value? Do you want that theming? Is the Little Mermaid important to you? Is being in that environment what you want? Or are you thinking, I need to save the the feet? (laughs) And, you know, which one matters most? And for me, I honestly think my answer is theming. Like everybody that listens to the show regularly knows that I like a room with a view. And when you're staying at the value resorts, that's not that's not really a thing, right? That these resorts don't have balconies. You're not reserving a lake view of Magic Kingdom or a special court. You're not doing that. So what you are reserving is either a room location or a theme. And for me, the thing that's going to make the vacation more special is that theme. That's for me. I think I disagree with you. I feel I feel like I would, between like preferred pop or Little Mermaid at Art of Animation, I think I would go pop because... I do love pop. My kids love pop as well. And like, I feel like I, there's nothing worse than like dragging exhausted kids. What feels like miles. And it's really not miles, but it does feel like when you get to that lobby and you're like, okay, and now (laughs) we need to walk for 15 minutes out to the back. It probably is legitimately like a, a, a 10 to 15 minute walk from the lobby to the back of Ariel, where Ariel building is. Do you agree? Is that does that feel right? Ten to fifteen? Yeah, and that's what I was gonna pop in and say. One of the be- beautiful things about our podcast is that we have multiple points of view here and listen to grandma here. <laughs> it's <laughs> you know, um, it's really adorable to see Ariel in the Little Mermaid area on day one. Yeah. And you walk in there at the very beginning of your trip and it's like, Oh, this is amazing. But when you're grandma with grandchildren and you're hiking, and I mean, it is a hike. <laughs> when you're even just the end of day one, <laughs> when you're at the end of a park day, it really does make a difference. So I'm with you, LJ. If it comes down to a standard size room, comparing it between Art of Animation or a preferred room at Pop Century, I am preferred all day long. So to me, the benefits of Art of Animation definitely do come in when you have the family suite option. But if you're not needing that extra size and that extra space, I am with you. Let's go preferred room at Pop Century. I think also like the usability of your resort, like your pools and getting your, you know, like getting your reusable mug and getting coffee that my my husband loves the reusable mug to go get like unlimited coffee for his, his, it's like a challenge how much free coffee quote unquote free coffee can be down and if you're in little mermaid i'll see you in an hour when you get there get your coffee and come back it's, it's probably more like a half an hour but still when you're staying preferred you're like he's gonna run and get coffee and it's gonna take five minutes so i just feel like all of those things add up and it's also like the kids need to eat and the food court is right there like uh, that's for me what makes it so i would definitely stay preferred over little mermaid now it's just like you said as soon as you bring in like the family suites as an option, I'm like, oh, I'm back over to Art of Animation. Yeah. And this is all this is I think the good word here is intentional. When you pick Little Mermaid, you're intentionally choosing that you want that theming and that that specific resort more than any other because your point about the coffee, that's such a good one. Right. And just the functionality of your day to day. You're intentionally saying I'm OK with that. And I think that any listener planning a vacation needs to be aware of that and and be able to make that intentional choice. The rooms themselves, not super basic. When we were doing the Pop Century episode and we were breaking down their rooms, we talked about the sort of laminate wood look. These clean, pretty basic layouts. Little Mermaid is not that. You have secret treasures everywhere, big crustaceans and shells and characters that your kiddos are going to recognize and vibrant, vibrant colors. I mean, this looks like my my youngest daughter's coloring page, you know, mm-hmm. come to life. And so I, that is something I really value about these rooms. They do not, like the other value resorts, have the pull down Murphy bed, um, or excuse me, like Pop Century. They actually have two beds in the Little Mermaid room. So if you're somebody that wants a a bed and wants to avoid the Murphy bed, this is a good option for you because it does have the two beds in the room. Are those queens or doubles? Do you know offhand? They're queens. Okay, there are queens. Okay. I think I was like... Yeah, which is super nice. Okay, that's good. Man, I can't stand the two double situation. No, the queens are great. And the suitcases can slide under them. So you have more functionality in the room, which is awesome. And it also has the standard amen- amenities that you would want, you know, coffee maker, things like that. 
the rooms, while they are very small, they do have a tub and shower and toilet area separate from the sink. So they use the space very well. And then the sink even has a curtain. And so you can really have lots of people. I mean, you only have four in the room, right? And you essentially have three little areas where you could be separately getting ready, which is really great. Yeah, they feel bigger to me. I would wonder if I, like, I, you know, I'm not like the square footage queen to like be able to say they feel bigger to me than the all star standard rooms just by like a little bit, not by like, but Maybe it's just their use of space. It might not actually be big. They use space really well. And I agree that they have a larger feel. They just, they feel great. I've only stayed in The Little Mermaid once. And it it was, like you said, like very intentional. Like I wanted to have the experience. Ace loves Ariel. I just had actually her and Cyrus with me. And that was a long way to push a stroller. But we also had gone into it knowing that this is what we're doing. We want to experience this theming. And then... We didn't go any other parks that weren't on the Skyliner. It was just a short trip, a couple of nights, three nights maybe. So we were like, all parks, we're, we're just doing like Epcot and Hollywood Studios so that I don't have to deal with the stroller on the bus. And I, I mean, it was a fabulous trip. Great memories from it. Fabulous. You, I mean, you're like laughing a little bit about the walk now, but these are those things that we talk about on the show all the time that, you know, the long walk or the over exhausted fit your four year old may throw or the rain that happened in the middle of your magic kingdom day. These are things that when you look back on your trip, they're not going to have ruined it and they're not going to be the standout memory of it. And so even that walk that isn't great, it's not going to ruin your trip, you know, nope. and you're going to laugh about it later. You're going to acknowledge it, but it's not going to be the standout memory. Agreed. So I think that, yeah, I think that successfully moves us then into the family suite conversation. And I want to spend a little time here because one other Valley resort has family suites and that is over at all-star music, which we have not covered in depth here on the show yet, but this is the other option. And outside of those, you know, you're really looking at villas in deluxe properties to sleep six. And at that point, you're looking at very, very high price tags. Or the cabins, so, they sleep six. Or the cabins. But, but then... That's a whole situation in itself. You're like, okay, but then also you probably want a golf cart and that's now you're back up in the price point of like a deluxe. So yeah, that's another intentional choice, you know, that's a very, yeah. And so I love that this option exists and we've talked a little bit about the themes, Lion King, Cars and Finding Nemo. Those are the movies you're going to step literally right into. They all have these courtyards with the characters and everything is recognizable. Everything is fun and everything is functional. So let's talk first about Cars and Lion King, because those are also considered the standard locations at Art of Animation. All of these family suites, before we get into the, the sections themselves, are going to have A kitchenette, which will include a microwave and a mini fridge uh, versus like a cooler that you might find in like other standard rooms, which is really nice. Coffee, coffee maker, uh, a nice sink, which is great, you know, in the little kitchenette area. The crown jewel here, two bathrooms. Mm -hmm. That's big. (laughs) That is huge. huge. That is huge. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, two bathrooms sold, right? A main bedroom uh, that's going to have a queen bed in it. So important to note, that's not a king bed in there, where a lot of the main bedrooms in the deluxe resorts um, will have that. This is going to be a queen. And then two separate sleeping spaces in the living area that are like in the same room. They're not shut off by a door or a wall, but they do kind of feel separate. And that's going to feature a table bed. (laughs) <laughs> so the table that you can eat at actually turns into a bed. I know listeners that haven't experienced that probably <laughs> think, oh my gosh, that must be so weird and uncomfortable. It's not. It's great. And a pullout. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to stand up here and say for our adult size listeners. See, now Allie's an adult, but she's she's kind of fun size. But <laughs> I am like king size, okay? So <laughs> the pullout couch area Okay, first of all, the Murphy bed that's the table is really comfortable. It is a real mattress with a nice, firm foundation. However, if you're planning to put grown adults that are not fun size, (laughs) the pull-out couch, you might want to consider all-star music's family suites instead of the pull-out couch that's available in the family suites here. And I think for a child, it is perfectly fine. Uh, it's, It's very comfortable for a child. But it is the fold out sofa where it it trifled. And so it's just not quite as comfortable. Whereas the all star suites, the family suites there are 
all Murphy bed. And so they are much more comfortable. So if you're six people or all six adults, you may want to go all star. But if you're just want to put children on the, the sofa bed, I just wanted to speak up in that respect just so that you at least are aware of it. But otherwise, I am totally into these rooms. They're adorable. I mean, the theming really is just so great, as we keep saying. And it goes into this second room. I mean, like when we were talking about it's just everywhere, we're talking two rooms full of theming with the beds, with the extra bathroom and sink. It's just, it's great. It's really perfect for that. I'm glad you said that about the pullout couch. Although my um, dad has actually slept on the pullout couch and he's pretty particular about beds. He didn't necessarily think it was terrible, but I think it's important to acknowledge it like you did because that kind of thing can actually be something that messes with your vacation. You know, if you have an issue with pullout uh, situations. So absolutely important to know. So the car section is the the one thing I like to point out about these suites. They are big. They are space. They are not luxury. I would not consider these luxury because while the immersion of the theming is really fun, it does have a sort of an artificial feel to it, you know, mm -hmm. and that may or may not be something you enjoy. So with cars, you have imagine like large cozy cones. It's like you step into Radiator Springs, which you can actually do at Disneyland, but you can't do at Disney World outside of this resort. And so it's basically like you're walking around Radiator Springs. You can walk into the little shops, which are the part of the resort entrances. The cars area has a pool, which we forgot to mention. The Little Mermaid section also has a pool, the Flip and Fins pool. And we'll kind of dig into all the pools here in a minute. But the Cozy Cone pool is there in the car section my, that are, the cozy cone pool is like to me the pool over there like i love 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 the theming over there and i have been known to like book a night at art of animation just take my kids to the pool over there i don't even stay in the room just i want to just go to the cozy cone pool for a while yeah one of the things that's great about it is that a lot of resorts have these quote-unquote quiet pools which are away from the main pool this is not where the pool games are happening or anything like that. And those are typically just like a normal pool you would see at a normal hotel, just a, you know, a rectangle, maybe a little bit of light theming, but typically not. And just some chairs where there's a nice place to swim and it's quiet. This quiet pool is fully themed. You know, it doesn't have all the activities, but it's a fully themed Disney resort pool. It has the cone cabanas, large, large cone cabanas, which do not require a reservation. First come, first serve. So if you have a little one that you need to get out of the sun, that is amazing. You know, what an opportunity that is. And they don't need a reservation, which I think is great. So cute. Yeah. And then inside the rooms, you kind of have this car shop type feel. You have workbenches and tool chests and different road type things. And so anybody that likes cars, it's a must stay, right? Yep. So stinking cute. So fun. And then you move over to Lion King and those suites are fully Lion King themed. You're going to see Timon and Pumbaa and Simba. Uh, walking across the log. There's the bone graveyard, boneyard play area. Really, really cool. The elephant graveyard, right? Isn't that what it's called? Yeah. And actually, they don't have a, a pool in that section. This is actually the only section that doesn't have a pool, but they do host a bonfire some on select nights. So you want to always look at the resort activities. They're not always doing every activity all the time. So make sure you're checking those when you arrive. But over near, there's a big pride rock. You can see that sometimes. And so all the sections have something great that they're offering inside the room. You have jungle, you know, you're, you're in the African safari. You're, you're seeing the Lion King. You've stepped into the movie. Can I point out for a second that the, the main bedroom where the queen is, is less themed in case you're going to be taking like a Disney doubter with you who doesn't necessarily want that in, in your face vibe. That main bedroom is much less like in your face. And the bathroom is that's like the ensuite for the main is basically not themed. There's there might be like a touch here or there, but to my recollection, I don't think there was anything in. And I've stayed in all of them, and I don't think there was any theming in the main bathroom. And I'm like, I am not the Disney doubter. I'm like, they could have they could have totally themed this for me. Like, what's up? But I do recognize that like I'm probably more the exception. And I think there's a lot of adults out there that are kind of like, <laughs> you know, relieved that this is maybe not in their face. It's a little more color themed versus just yeah. flat out in your face theme. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, 
And isn't it, it's going to be the Lion King area. If you wanted to have two groups, if you're with two groups in your party, um, one that might need a standard room and one that would need a family suite, those are not going to be in the same sections. So this Lion King area is going to be where you would want your family suite group to be because it will have the closest opportunity to be near your uh, the other party that is in, sorry, the mermaid room. So that you're not going to be able to have adjoining rooms if it's a standard room and a family suite. You know, you're not even going to be in the same section if you have two parties that you need one standard and one family suite. So the closest you can get is to request being in the Lion King area with the mermaid area. That's a great thing to point out because I do talk to a lot of families that have maybe a larger family with a lot of kids and, you know, the grandparents are maybe going or somebody else in the family that doesn't want the suite and that we have done that, you know, and that's a great thing to really point out because I think it's common. The final section is going to be the Finding Nemo section. And this is actually on our sleepiest episode of them all. This very section made our top list of must stays at Disney World for not only all of the reasons we've talked about this resort, but also this section is considered preferred. So the Finding Nemo family suites are a little bit more expensive than Cars and Lion King because you're paying for location. Although I don't think it's that more, Ellie. How, How much more? How much more maybe do you think it is? under maybe under a hundred a night i would say yeah. you know you're right there in that in that range and overall on your vacation a couple hundred swinging you know and it's it's really not a huge difference for the value you're getting because when you're preferred you're closer to the food court which we're going to talk about here in a second the main pool which is the big blue pool you're closest to the main lobby the bus station so you're just giving yourself that breath in your vacation that you may need. And then, of course, the theming of Finding Nemo is really, really fun. Being preferred, especially with a movie that so many love, is really great. And before we dive in and talk about the pools, as we've kind of hinted at here, I want to just say that, again, I want to drive home the point that when you're saying value to me, sometimes it's important to consider not view like you would at a deluxe resort, but rather location, which we talked about for Little Mermaid. So if you're thinking family suite, it's important to consider Nemo because I think in the end, it's going to be worth it to have that good preferred location. And that's going to be where you get it. All of these are going to be immersive. All of them are going to feel like you stepped right into the movie that they're themed after. And for any Smart Moms travel agents listening today, the hidden Mickey will be immersive <laughs> because this resort is just that. Can I say, too, that I, of all three, like, so I've stayed in all of the sections, all four of them. And I actually, like, prefer the Cars and the Lion King theming and, like, whole vibe that has going on. they have going on. But... I still will choose the Nemo section. Nemo is not my favorite. Of, like, I love the Cars movies. I love Lion King, like grew up on it. Nemo was like, I like it, but it's not my favorite. And yet I'll still stay there because just the fact that it's like the preferred, it is so much more convenient. So what do you guys, what about you guys? Stay preferred. Are your families the type that you get out the door and halfway to Skyliner and somebody realizes, oh, wait, I wanted to take my charger and it's still in the wall. I can, some dad... Will you run back and get my charger or <laughs> I just need to run back and get my charger real quick. And if you're in Nemo, it just makes it less frustrating. <laughs> so it's just a lot closer. That is such a good point. I There's no dad to be running back in our family. It's yeah. me. <laughs> Hi, I'm the runner. And I remember my youngest daughter, I think I may have even mentioned this on the podcast before, when she was a baby, loved her binky. And we got to Epcot and we were staying in the boardwalk area and she forgot it. We forgot it. She was a baby. <laughs> and I had to run. I liked how you put that on her for a second there. Like, yeah. come on, kid. Get your life together. Baby. Get it together. <laughs> yeah, come on, two year old. And so we. I ran from World Showcase back to the room at Boardwalk. Oh. You know, that was one of those things. Thank goodness we were staying there. And you're exactly right, Stacey. We are that family. As prepared as I try to be, and this is a pro tip, I set our family stroller up the night before. So I'll usually have it by the door with things that we need for the day. So like the water bottles are ready to be filled with the lids off right there. The bags are packed. Things that I know we're taking, magic bands. Everything is on the stroller ready to roll because I have three little kids. And so I try to be prepared. And even in my best efforts, there, something is left behind, right? You need a lot of things. And that's such a good point because I don't want to get all the way to the buses and have to 
traipsing on back to the cozy cone. I really need to know that every family relates to that story. I just really need to know that we're all the same yeah. there, right? We <laughs> we definitely, yeah. I, I like, I'm usually very prepared and like the kids I'm in charge of have their things, but then the kids that I'm not, I, like not in charge of, like my bigger kids are definitely in the like, like they should be taking responsibility for themselves and are for the most part, but don't have like their systems in place. So we're constantly running back for the charger. The charger is the main thing. And so now I've been like, do you have your charger? Sunglasses is another thing because the sun is brutal in Florida. And it, it's pretty common for me to need to buy a $20 pair of cheap sunglasses at the parks for either my husband, my oldest son, or my oldest daughter. And then I have all these little sunglasses that fit like all my kids. And I buy those by the bulk on Amazon. And those are, I always have like eight pairs of those in my backpack for the little ones, but for the big kids and my husband, it's like, oh, it's such a surprise that it's sunny here in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker. I wear prescription glasses. And so I'm always paranoid. I'm going to forget my sunglasses because I would be out of luck when I got down there. Ooh, if, if not, That'd be awful. Yeah. That's, it's hat time. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and so I want to talk about the pools. There are two quiet pools, the flipping fins pool over in the mermaid section the Cozy Cone Pool over in the car section, which we talked about, cabanas at the Cozy Cone, uh, and theming at both, which is really, really unique to this resort for those being quiet pools. But the main pool here, the Big Blue Pool, largest on Disney property, uh, 12,000 square feet. 12,000 square foot pool. Huge. Uh, huge. Zero depth entry. Yeah, zero depth entry, which for me, that's a big, big, big mm -hmm. must on my list. When we showed up, when I had babies that couldn't even wear life jackets yet and we didn't have zero entry, it was brutal. <laughs> you know, zero entry where they can just sit and splash. It's great. No slides, no hot tubs. You know, that's something with the value resorts that's important to know, but an awesome splash pad, which is great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And it's right. They're very smart in how they set that up because the zero entry is right there by the splash pad. So you're like, Ma, Ma, as mom, I can sit right there and watch like my, you know, my bigger kids kind of in my periphery, you know, on the splash pad, they can play. I feel pretty good about that. And then really watch whoever is right there at the, at the zero depth. So it's, it's a good setup. Yeah, it's perfect. And this is the best that the value resorts have to offer. It's some of the best Disney has to offer if you're okay without slides and hot tubs because of its theming, because of its size, because of its setup. You know, some other resorts will have the splash pad behind another gated area. And you really have to make a choice to go over there. And you really can't split up if you have multiple kids that want different things. And so because of its setup, like you just mentioned, it, again, is one of the best. There's also the drop-off pool bar, which you can get snacks and pizza delivery and drinks and food to, to hang out there all day, which is really, really great. Those Disney, if you, if you listen to our Disney bubble episode, we talked about the poolside games that Disney plays at their resorts. This is the pool that's going to have that daily and the evening movie. You can check in the lobby for some of those events that are happening at the resort every day that you're there. This is where that movie is going to play nightly. Perfect pool scenario, really, you know, if you're, if you're okay giving up the water slide. Yeah, and the size really just cannot be um, overstated. It is really big, and there are a lot of kids at Art of Animation, a lot of kids. And yet, the size of this pool allows for there to be space among families, and you can, even with a lot of kids in, that, in the pool together at the same time, you still have your own little space. So it's just really big, and that is very, very helpful. I agree yeah. with you, Stacey. It's never, you never feel crowded over there, which I... At at some of the all-star movies or at some of the all-stars, I have felt like the pools feel crowded to me. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't never feel that at our animation. Yeah, I agree. That's why it's one of the best pools, not just for the values, but really on property. Food at Art of Animation, you're not getting uh, sit-down restaurants that you reserve. You're not getting Disney cuisine, but you are. It's one of the best food court options. You know, there's five. It's called Landscape of Flavors Food Court. And you're getting four or five, I think it's four food stations that are very big and very, very kid friendly, uh, you know, classics, pizza, burgers, chicken tenders, things like that, that your kids, mac and cheese are going to eat. But then there's also some really awesome, more adult type options like barbecue or, or smoothies, fresh made which is really, really great. And I really, I think you can get fresh made to order salads, which I think is really, really special. I mean, do you mm -hmm. all think that this is one of the best food courts? 
I do. And I have, I have strong opinions about this because this is a conversation that I've like long entertained that this food court and the fact that you can walk to pop centuries as well. So you actually have like right there without needing transportation, you have so many options right there. I feel like that is a far better situation for food than in a lot of deluxes where I think in deluxes, they are much more likely to assume that you want to do a sit down meal, which I, I, you know, I may want to do one or two of those per trip, but I have all these kids like there, you don't know when your kids are going to be hungry and, and adults will eat whenever it's time to eat. Right. We've like conditioned our bodies to do that. Kids will not eat when it's when they're not hungry. So you have to be in this place of like flexibility when you have children. And I feel like the values more than the deluxes, you're going to get something delicious. It's going to be hot, fresh. They have so many people to feed that they are constantly cooking. You're not going to wait. And it's just a better situation than a lot of the other food opportunities around property. So don't even worry about that. You're going to be in a good place. Are y'all always looking into the coolers to see what kind of little seasonal yes. desserts they might have? Because they're so cute. They have the cutest cupcakes and, you know, just whatever little theme might be going on at the time. Oh, I love looking through the coolers. and I, I love that you just said that because I also do that. Mm-hmm. And I, <laughs> I'm an impulse buyer there on the, the fun dessert. And they're usually so huge that you can buy one for like three kids to split. So I'll like buy two cupcakes for my for my kids. And it's... Super fun. Yeah, I love that. I want to use that opportunity to take another break and pivot into our guest because this is going to cover a lot of what we're going to discuss and we're going to dive even more because food, kids, and food courts, that's a big deal in making your day really successful. Hey there, friends. I'm Katie Boone, one of your podcast co-hosts. I'd love to invite you to join my Facebook Disney planning community called Planning Disney with Babies, Toddlers, and Preschoolers. In my group, I love discussing all the aspects of planning your magical vacation with little ones. Find my community at facebook.com slash groups slash plan Disney with little ones. Again, that's facebook.com slash groups slash plan Disney with little ones. When you join, don't forget to tell me you heard about my group on the podcast. See you there. Welcome back, everyone. I am really, really excited as we are continuing our conversation today on Art of Animation. We are introducing a brand new segment here on the show that we're going to be having all the time. Today, I am joined by another Smart Moms travel agent who is not a regular here on the podcast. Her name is Lauren Elliott. Hi, Lauren. Hey. And she's our first special guest here on the show, which is just So thrilling and so exciting for so many reasons. But the number one reason is because, of course, as Smart Moms travel agents, we're all experts. We all love planning Disney, but we all have different areas that we specialize in and that we're really passionate about. And with Lauren, I would love for you actually to go ahead and tell our listeners what it is that you really, really specialize in and how we can relate this to today's topic, Art of Animation. So I focus on food allergies. My oldest is 11. And ever since he was nine months old, um, even before then, we always knew that there was something wrong with him. But not until he was nine months old was he diagnosed with a whole list of food allergies to include peanuts, tree nuts, poultry, some of the like normal things, but then also some unique things like mustard um, and peas and sunflower seeds. So I really specialize in food allergies just because I know from a firsthand experience how anxiety inducing it is to be able to find your child food and keep them safe while doing so. So and how this ties into art of animation is a lot of people think that whenever you go to Disney, you're going to need to have a kitchen, you're going to need to cook your own food. But honestly, that's why we go to Disney because I never have to worry about finding him something safe to eat. Disney is the one place where I can go and really relax and like not have to be cooking him food all the time. So that's really interesting. I can't imagine. I think all the time because I have friends who have kiddos that suffer from food allergies, you know, especially really expansive ones like you listed. And my my kids do not. And so it's not something I can personally relate to, but I can empathize greatly. And I cannot imagine the stress that it would be to know that you have this weekly routine, the things in your own home are safe, right? And you're traveling outside of the home and outside of that regular schedule. And especially when you have a small child, right, that may see other people eating 
an ice cream cone and they just want one. And when you're out and about on other vacations, those things may not be readily available. But from my understanding and what I have been able to tell families I have worked with and from your firsthand experience, that's just not the feeling when you're at Disney World and you have a kiddo that has these allergy issues. Yeah, you're right, Allie. So we might not be able to find exactly, you know, there. there's going to be different things that you're going to be able to find, not necessarily the ice cream that you're looking for, but they always have really great alternatives. And something that I like to keep in mind for my clients is to never go in expecting something, but to always be surprised with what you'll be able to get. So like when we talk to the chefs, we never demand we really need need this. What These are our allergies. How can you help us? And 10 times out of 12, they go beyond any of our expectations. They We have gotten steak at places that don't have steak because they ask him, hey, buddy, you know, what do you want? Steak? And they're like, um, I don't have that, but just give me 10 minutes and I'll be right back. And like, they find it whenever it comes to the dining plan. They charge it just like it was a hamburger, but he's over here eating steak and steamed broccoli, like mm-hmm. something that he's asked for and they were able to accommodate. I love that at the end of your sentence, you said 10 times out of 12. And I thought the end of that sentence was going to be they can accommodate you. <laughs> but the end of that sentence was they go above and beyond. So yeah. it's like 12 out of 12, they're going to accommodate you. But 10 out of those 12 times, it's going to be beyond what you could have even imagined. It's another reason why Disney World, while it can feel like it's going to be a really overwhelming vacation for families in in circumstances like yours, it's the lesser stressful and overwhelming option. I think that it's always super overwhelming when it's your first time. But once you go and you experience what they can really do for you, that's lets you put your, you know, let your hair down. I don't know. Let's you relax. Um, My husband was one of those people that like, we're going to go one time, we're never going to go back. And then once he's seen the level of care that Disney provides, he tells everybody like, this is the only place that we're going to vacation again. Have you found that all parks, let's just start with the parks, are created equally when it comes to these allergies or do some parks and or restaurants do it better? I would say that some places do do it better. Some places are a little bit easier. Epcot is one of the parks that it could be a little bit more challenging just with the different countries, the different holiday festivals and the different booths. Um, I know specifically I asked about the Violet Lemonade when we were there this summer and they were like, Ugh, we're going to have to like phone the chef just to make sure. So it's not it's a little bit more complicated, but it's still doable. There's still options anywhere that you go. Yeah, I kind of always assumed options everywhere more maybe at Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Magic Kingdom or the resorts, it's just a little bit easier to find accommodations. So when you're looking at a value resort like Art of Animation and they have that really expansive food court, right? The landscape of flavors, which we've been discussing on the show, and they have all of those separate little food booths. How do you rate that? Are are the ready available options things that you just can grab and go? Or is it one of those circumstances where they're going to bring you a steak at the, at the cafeteria? So... That's the thing. It kind of just depends on how severe your allergy is. If you don't have any concern with cross-contamination, sure, go ahead and get bacon right off the line. But for us, cross-contamination is a concern. So I love the Value Resort specifically because the quick service, the setup there, the chef is right there. You know, it's not like I'm going to have to track him down. I'm just like, hey, we have a lot of food allergies. Can I speak with the chef? And then they'll come out and, you know, I have an allergy card that I present to them. That way there's never a time that either I could forget something or he could forget something. And, you know, okay, yeah, I do have waffles. This is the ingredients in it. And he packages it up in the back and then brings us out our own little tray. So allergy card, you mentioned that's not even something that is on my radar to think about. I travel to Disney with a good friend of mine whose kiddo has a lot of allergies and I don't think I've seen them present an allergy card. Is that something you recommend or what is the best advice you recommend to a family with special considerations traveling when it comes to health and allergies for their kiddo? If you're only managing one or two, I don't think that an allergy card is necessarily, you know, something that you really need. But with us, with having so many allergies, I do have business cards that I printed either on Canva or Vistaprint are the two places that I really go to. Um, And it's just something that, like I said earlier, it just helps me make sure that I have presented all the allergies to him. 
he's going to track that. And so that just helps everybody. And I've gotten so many compliments from the chefs directly that this is such an incredible resource for them. That's really great to know and such a good piece of advice. So you'll be pretty safe. You would say any sit down restaurant, any quick service. What about snacks when you're walking up to a snack cart? I know you said festivals at Epcot can be a little bit difficult. What about just the snack carts you're walking up to? Can those typically be accommodating or is that really going to be case by case? It's really going to be case by case. So any snack cart that you like, let's think of Magic Kingdom. If you were to walk up to the egg roll cart, they are going to have an allergy binder and you just wait in line, ask for it whenever you get up there. And it tells all the ingredients in the product and it even has highlighted, oh, this has milk in it. So, you know, you know, they're not going to be able to go make you one without milk, but you can at least know what's in that specific product. And then another thing to keep in mind is back by like Dumbo, they have peanuts next to the churros. So like that might not be the place that you want to go get a churro. You might want to find a different place that's not such in close quarters with peanuts. And of course, you can do that in the My Disney Experience app for most most circumstances. What about staying at Art of Animation and having that kitchen? Have you found that when you do the family suites, it does it level up and change your experience for having a, a kiddo with these considerations? Do you cook your food from home or are you more likely to say, I cook enough at home, I'm somewhere safe and I'm not doing it here? So with Disney, I don't cook. The The thing where Art of Animation would be superior in terms of different value resorts that you could visit is we always bring Ziploc baggies. So if he does not eat all of his food, which he never does, We pack that up and bring it back to the room. So having the mini fridge to store all that, but then also having the microwave to heat back up waffles or bacon or whatever just simplifies our stay. And rather than going to the food court to heat it up. That's such good advice. So allergy cards, Ziploc baggies, these binders I didn't even know about. I again, I don't have allergies. So there are these little hidden nuggets all around Disney World that are there for you to discover. And if you have a consideration, you know, chances are Disney has already thought of it. Yep. Well, I really appreciate you talking about this because I think, especially today, I own a dance studio and work with lots of little kids. And I just noticed food allergies being so prominent and more so than ever before. And I I know a lot of our listeners can really resonate with what you deal with at home all the time. And I always talk about how Disney cruises are the vacation for my family, right? Like that's where I get to stop being mom and just vacation with my family as mom. And it sounds like for you, that's just Disney World in general, because you can really let your guard down in ways you can't everywhere else. Yeah. Disney in general, whether it be Disneyland, Disney World or Disney Cruise Line has all done fantastic jobs with our food allergies. I love to hear that. Well, we are going to play the lightning lane. This is a fun game that we typically put at the end of our show. We're going to move it right in here today. I'm going to put you in the hot seat, throw some lightning lane questions at you related to art of animation and food allergies. We're just going to mix it up. How does that sound? Sounds good. All right. Quick answers. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. Which family suite theming is better, Lion King or Cars? Cars. Would you stay in a Little Mermaid standard room or a pop preferred room? Okay. So I have two boys. So my decision is different than others, but it's going to be pop just for the convenience. Pop for convenience. Overall favorite theming at Art of Animation? Nemo. Best allergy friendly food from Landscape of Flavors? Fries or bacon. Oh, see, I would have never guessed fries. Which quiet pool is better at Art of Animation? The Flippin' Fins pool or the Cozy Cone? Cozy Cone. Is the Big Blue Pool the best pool on Disney property? I love the theming, but no. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely not. But it's it's got some good things. It is not the best pool. <laughs> what is the most allergy-friendly park? I'm going to stick with Magic Kingdom. Favorite allergy-friendly food in all of Disney World? He really loves Dole Whips. And the boardwalk has um, the deli over there and that has allergy-friendly muffins. And that's the other like thing that he loves. Ooh, that's good to know. And... From Art of Animation, you could take the Skyliner over to the boardwalk and hit up that deli. That's a great little, mm-hmm. little tidbit. Most unexpected allergy-friendly food option? It really just depends for your allergies. Okay, that's fair. When it comes to last-minute Disney trips, what's the closest you've ever booked to traveling? Um, Two months, about. Yeah. Two months? I feel like that's pretty far. Yeah. Well, I mean, my husband's in the military, so we have to plan things out. Yeah, we kind of have to plan as well. I wish I could be one of those families that's just like, we're going to Disney tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to do that today. Maybe I'm going to Disney tomorrow. Maybe whenever he retires in three years. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, this was seriously so much fun. I cannot, I'm so thankful that you gave this insight because I learned a lot. So I know our listeners learned a lot. When it comes to Disney, there are always new things to learn, which is why we love doing this show, but also why I'm so excited to bring voices like yours in to help us just really understand everything on another level that Disney can really offer. So why don't you give a shout out to some of the places that our listeners can find you? So you can find me on Smart Allergy Moms Planning Disney on Facebook or on Instagram. I also have Dead Panning Disney. Um, and then I also share tips on just like my Facebook page, which is Magical Memories with Lauren. And if you would like to follow Lauren or join her Facebook community, those links will absolutely be in the show notes for today's episode. I encourage you, especially if you are an allergy mama or aunt or grandma or whoever's listening, a friend of the allergy community, please go ahead and connect with her. Make sure you're getting in on all the tips she has to give because no one better than somebody that lives it firsthand every single day. Thank you so much to our guest today. That was really, really fun. I am so excited to just integrate different opinions and voices because we are all experts here, but we also all have things about Disney that we really, really love and feel passionately about. And I'm excited to share that you know, with our listeners, because our listeners feel passionately the more they hear from us. So let's just wrap this up here with our Art of Animation conversation. In addition to all the amazing things we've covered today, this resort has laundry services, an arcade for your kiddos, and of course, free parking as an on-site guest. It will work with your My Disney Experience app to use as your room key and check-in services and all the things you may need to know, mobile ordering while you're on property. So it's just a fully functioning resort and really a must stay if you want that Disney life and you want that Disney inclusion and you have especially little ones or large large parties. Yeah, you're making me want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Currently checking calendar. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That's what I mean. When we dive, Yeah, when we dive deep into these topics, I'm like, I'm ready to go. Book my trip right now. Yep. That's going to do it for us today. We are so excited to be talking so in depth about these resorts because I think the more you know, the better prepared you are at making these decisions and having answers for not only your family, but for your tra Smart Moms travel agent as you're working on building your vacation. And you're just so much more equipped to have the best time you possibly can. Please, as a friendly reminder, we love sharing all this content with all of you, our listeners. And we love that you love to hear what we have to say. Recently, a listener gave us a five-star review and said, I just started listening to the podcast and it makes me so happy. Totally enjoying all the talk about Disney, including the tips, tricks, and all that comes with it. This podcast brings me to my happy place when I can't be at my happy place. And we want to thank that listener so, so much for saying that. I love recording these episodes with the other hosts because it's truly where we find our happiness as well. And so knowing that we're sending you to your happy place wherever you may be listening means a whole lot to us. And if you value this content, hitting your listening platform every single week, take a minute right now, push like, subscribe wherever you're listening. Just takes one second. Like and subscribe. Make sure these episodes are hitting your platform right when they release. You can be among the first listeners and never miss out on anything we have to say. If you're enjoying it, consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. Any little bit helps us continue to produce this content that you're enjoying so much. We have two tiers to explore. We're in there taking opinions, having polls with our subscribers, allowing them to have a voice in the content that we're going to release. And we would love for your voice to be part of that chorus of voices. So take a minute. The link is in our show notes and uh, you can become a member right now today. Subscription starts at $2 and we have a tier going up to $7. Perfect gift to give someone that might be planning a vacation as well. So click the link to learn more and we hope to see you in there. That's going to be it today. If you enjoyed this episode, you may want to uh, check out some of our other episodes. We have what's the best age to visit Disney World. If you're bringing kiddos that might like art of animation, you may want to learn a little bit about the best things to do when you have kids of all ages. And maybe you'll like what you don't know about being in the Disney bubble, because being in the Disney bubble is a great way to make your Disney vacation the most successful it can be. Until next time, I'll see you real soon.